Now let's talk a little bit about the word sacrament. That is not in the Bible. Now that should not alarm you. As long as we have a biblical understanding of the word sacrament, that's okay. The word sacrament has been around a long time, at least since the 300s. And I'll tell you how it developed. Uh, but don't be bothered by the word sacrament because we have a very significant name for God that's not in the Bible either, which all Christians accept. What would be that name of God that we all accept that's not in the Bible? No, nope. that's in the, no, nope. that's in the Bible. What? The Trinity. Is that in the Bible? No, but all Christians believe in the Trinity or the triune God. Because that term, while not in the Bible, the terminology, triune God, Trinity, teaches the meaning of the Bible. That the Father's God, the Son's God, the Holy Spirit's God, yet there are one God. See? So don't be disturbed about the word sacrament because the very word Trinity or triune God, which is basic to our Christian faith, that terminology is not in the Bible either. So where did the word sacrament come from? Well, it happened this way. There was an early church father by the name of Jerome who lived in the three and the four hundreds. He kind of overlapped those, uh, dec uh, those uh, centuries. Third and fourth, three hundreds and four hundreds. He was a very famous scholar, and what he was known for is Jerome translated the Bible, and the Old Testament, remember, was written in Hebrew, the New Testament in Greek. He translated the entire Bible into Latin. Okay. And this version became known as whoops, the Vulgate. Anybody ever hear the Vulgate before? I think I spelled that right, Vulgate. Because Vulgate comes from the Latin word vulgar. Now, in our, this shows what happens to language. In our day and age, vulgar means yucky, right? But in those days, Vulgate or vulgar simply means common. So it became known as the, uh, as the Vulgate because in his day, Latin was the common language of all the people. So by translating it into Latin, he was translating the Bible from Hebrew and Greek into the language of the people. Okay, now here's the point. Every time he came to the Greek word in the New Testament for mystery, and remind you here, because you may not remember this, in the, in the New Testament, mystery refers to the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, we wouldn't have known anything about how God saved us in Jesus Christ, unless he what? He told us. Before he told us, that was all a mystery. We didn't know about that. Now he's told us. So the, the word mystery in the New Testament refers to the gospel. Every time Jerome came to the Greek word for mystery, he translated it sacramentum. And of course, in the word sacramentum, you can see the word sacrament. Now what happened, and I, I don't know if there is an answer to this, but I don't know the answer if there is, and I'm not sure there is an answer. So the word sacrament then starts out basically as a reference to the gospel, the mystery, the gospel. But somewhere as the centuries and decades went by, it went, it went from meaning the gospel in general to the sacred Acts, like baptism and the Lord's Supper, because I don't know if you've figured this out yet, but even as the word is gospel, baptism and the Lord's Supper are also gospel, because what we're going to see, the basic blessing of baptism and the Lord's Supper is forgiveness of sins. So somehow that all developed, I don't know, but it came down then that the sacrament referred to these, these, uh, these rites rather than the gospel in general. Uh, here, here's, here's what a sacrament is. One, Given by Christ. Given by Christ. Was baptism given by Christ? Yes, we've already seen that. We'll see two weeks from tonight, Lord's Supper is given by Christ. Number two, must have visible elements. Visible elements. We said the visible element in baptism is water. The visible element we'll see in the Lord's Supper is bread and wine. And three, very important, very important, attached to that visible element, Water, bread, and wine. The promise of God's forgiveness. 
the promise of God's forgiveness. So that's the definition, biblical definition of a sacrament, instituted by Christ with visible elements, with the promise of forgiveness. Okay. Now the Roman Catholic Church uh, has seven sacraments, and we have only two. Number one, baptism. Number two, Lord's Supper. Number three, confirmation. Number four, marriage. Number five, uh, let's call it confession. There's different terms. We call it penance, but we'll call it confession. Number six, anointing of the, of the sick. Anointing of the sick. It used to be called last rites or extreme unction. Anointing of the sick. Number seven, holy orders. Holy orders like if you want to become a priest or a monk or a nun. Okay, let's go to this very, very quickly unless you have comments after I'm done with them. Number one, baptism. Okay, yeah, we accept that as a sacrament. We don't have any argument there. Number two, the Lord's Supper. Yes, we accept that as a sacrament. We agree. Confirmation. No, we don't accept that as a sacrament, even though if you know anything about the Lutheran Church, we practice confirmation. Our young people here go through, through two years. You really get off easy. Our young people, sixth and seventh grade, through two years of, 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 of education, being taught God's word, and then in the seventh grade in our church here, they're confirmed in a ceremony, in a church service, and they take their first communion. But the problem is, there's no, do you know of anything in the Bible that says have a confirmation ceremony? So it's not commanded by God. Now what is commanded by God? Teaching, that is commanded by God, teaching. But there's nothing in the Bible about once you're done teaching, have a confirmation ceremony. There's nothing in there. The other thing that's different uh, between us and the Roman Catholic Church is in the Roman Catholic Church, um, only the bishop, not even the priest, only the bishop can come in, and the emphasis is on the ceremony. And through this ceremony called confirmation and the laying hands on the child by the bishop, he receives the Holy Spirit. Well, there's nothing in the Bible connected with that. Is there laying on hands in the Bible? Yes, but not in a ceremony called confirmation. So we like confirmation, it's good, and it's a good way to teach our young people, uh, but there's no ceremony in the Bible that's been commanded by Christ or anything like that. Number four, marriage. Ah, was that given by God? Yeah, it's given by God. Are there visible elements? Well, not really, unless you want to call the, the man and the woman, but here's the, here's the kicker. Is there a promise anywhere in the Bible that if you get married, your sins are forgiven? See, see and that's our third, defin, third element of the definition. It has to be the promise of forgiveness of sin. So we accept marriage as an institution of God, but it's not a sacrament that gives forgiveness and eternal life. Okay, uh, anointing of the sick or last rites or extreme unction. Um, uh, there's no command in the Bible. The only reference to this, anybody know where the only reference to this really is in the New Testament? And it's not a command, it's just sort of a... It's in James. It's in James. Yeah, that's in James. Call the elders of the church, which are the pastors, and, and so forth, and so forth, and things like that. Yeah, anointing of oil, and things like that. That's right. So here's my point. We're not against uh, going to somebody the sick, having prayers with them, devotions, even anointing with oil or something like this. But it's not a sacrament that in and of itself uh, gives the forgiveness of sins or, or, or something like that. It's not, it's not directly commanded by Christ. In other words, James mentioned it, but does Jesus mention it? No, there's nowhere mentioned by Jesus. So what I will do, for example, I go visit sick people all the time. And I pray with them and read God's word and remind them of their baptism. So there's nothing wrong with that. But there hasn't been a, given a specific ceremony or ritual uh, that we are to do. And then holy orders. That's being a priest, a monk, or a nun. Uh, the problem here historically is that if you became a monk or a priest or a nun, you got just a little bit more grace than the average Christian. Okay? And of course, there's nothing in the Bible there. I'm a pastor. I don't have any more grace than you have. I'm a pastor. I don't have any more forgiveness than you have. I'm a pastor. I don't have a closer walk with God than you do. Okay. So, uh, did I, by the way, did I skip over accidentally penance? Confession? Yeah, okay, let me do that real quick. Uh, <laughs> This one, this one sometimes, uh, Lutherans will sometimes speak of a third sacrament called uh, confession. 
Uh, the, well, we, we're not against that, but there's really no visible element. But, uh, but clearly, God has commanded us, Jesus has commanded us to forgive in his name. And so our Lutheran confession says, if somebody really wants to push confession as a sacrament, okay, we won't argue that much about it. But there are some differences that I said in another lesson in that uh, you may never come to your, a Lutheran pastor for private confession because there's no command to do that. It's up to you. Might, you, might, you might not do that. Uh, so there's some differences there. 